Hello students, good afternoon. This is Professor Henderson and today we are going to be discussing chapter 30 on vital signs. So let's look at the chapter learning objective. At the completion of this chapter, the student will be able to discuss the mechanism of thermal regulation, describe the mechanism of heat loss and conservation, discuss physiological changes associated with fever, list various components of vital signs and appropriate parameters for adults and pediatrics, discuss how cultural and ethnicity impacts blood pressure, identify various techniques to assess an infant's vital signs, delegate vital sign measurements to assistive nursing staff, List some non-pharmacological methods to treat fever, list pharmacological approach to treat fever, and demonstrate how to measure vital signs and proper documentation. So as an indications for vital signs. Measuring vital sign is the responsibility of an RN. However, an RN can delegate to certify nursing assistants and PCA to check patients' vital signs. But it is the responsibility of the RN to critically analyze the findings. So, for example, let's say you have a patient and you assigned one of your CNA to measure her vital signs. And the CNA comes to you and tell you, Mrs. Jones, her respiratory rate is 27 and her temperature is 101. So what will be your responsibility? Are you just going to take those data as face value or as an RN, you will go and measure the patient vital signs yourself? to validate the findings. Equipment use, ensure it's working appropriately. Let's say you're checking someone's blood pressure, make sure you use the appropriate cuff. Appropriate cuff for an adult, a pediatric patient. So if your patient is it's really the arm is quite um, large, you're not going to use a regular cuff because that, that's really going to alter the, um, the reading. So use appropriate equipment. Also, it's important to ask your patients before you check their vital signs. Let's say you're doing their blood pressure. What are some factors that influence blood pressure? It's imperative that you ask your patient if they, they were exercising within the last 30, 40 minutes. Let's say you're checking their temperature. Have you had something cold or something hot to drink? That will alter the findings. Also, screen your patients. Do a thorough nursing assessments. Check if your patients have any um, implantable device or they had a mastectomy or they have a, a shunt or any type of um, access site for dialysis. It is contraindicated to check someone's blood pressure on the arm that they have an affected device or drawing, doing vena punctures. Also, it's important to know the patient's baseline so you can compare. You can compare and contrast the findings. The environment, make sure the environment is not too overstimulated. It's quiet and it's calm. Use a systematic approach. Also collaborate your findings with other, with other um, healthcare providers. Medications, 
what are some medications that um that can affect your blood pressure it's important to ask your patient do you take do you take medi blood pressure medication high blood pressure medications such as lopressor catapril amlodipine calcium channel blockers all these all these medications can affect your blood pressure inform your patient of the findings and also document in the chart appropriately we have a little case study here um, on Miss Coburn, 26 year old school teacher, her maternal grandparents immigrated to America from Brazil. She smokes one pack of cigarettes a day and has smoked since she was 16 years old. She's 20 pounds overweight. Do you think that Mr. Coburn is having a stroke? If so, what are the signs and symptoms of a stroke? How can you educate Ms. Caborn about her smoking practices? Do you tell her to stop or do you try to recommend to slow down on her smoking? Do you recommend smoking cessations such as nicotine patch and gums? What are some healthy lifestyle can you educate Miss Caborn about? Making healthy food choices, avoid fatty food, eat fresh fruits and vegetables, have our blood pressure checked every so often, incorporate an exercise program into her life. So body temperature physiology, as we know, there are various sites in our body that we can monitor a patient's um, temperature, such as oral, rectal, axillary, tympanic, temporal. So these are various sites that we can measure someone's temperature. As I said previously, it's important to um to ask your patient that if they had something hot or cold to drink before you check their temperature um, so the acceptable range for oral temperatures within 98.6 to 100.4 and if you convert that into celsius it's about 36 to 38 as we know that geriatric patients, their temperature will be um, slightly one degree to two degrees um, or less. Let's say they might have a 90, 96 to 97, that's, that's pretty normal for them. So what is the most accurate med methods of measuring temperature? As we know, Taking a rectal temperature is the most accurate um, accurate reading, and it's important to know what atom an anatomical position you will place your patient. How do you insert the um, the thermometer? How many inches you insert it into the rectum, and it's about eight minutes to measure a rectal temperature. Do you think it's beneficial to take an oral temperature on a patient with facial trauma? So it is contraindicated to, to take a temperature on a patient that has a stroke or patients with history of um, seizures or patient with any type of facial trauma. It's not recommended to do a oral temperature or patient that is scamatose. We will take a rectal temperature. 
what body system regulates temperature? It's the hypothalamus, right? That's our um, thermostat. Vital signs, these are some um, normal findings or normal blood pressure and ranges for uh, adult versus a pediatric. It's in Potter and Perry. So body temperature regulation. We already said the hypothalamus is the thermostat and it regulates your temperature. So a person with brain trauma or a person with spinal cord injury, their thermal regulation will be altered. It's important to know these uh, mechanism of heat loss, radiation, conduction, convection, and evaporization. So what is um, radiation? Radiation is transferring of heat from a surface of an object to another, to another object without direct contact. So who can give me an example of radiation? For example, if you're removing blankets and clothing from a patient, that's an example of um, conservation of heat. The other one is um, conduction. So conduction has to do with direct contact with a cooler object. So let's say applying layers of clothing to prevent heat loss. That's an example of conduction. Convection is transferring of heat away from air. For example, a fan blowing cool air is an example of convection. Evaporization is the Evaporization is evaporization is um, from the skin where your body evaporizes water from the skin. Water is lost and it's about 600 to 900 ml can be evaporized. So how about Skin temperature regulation. The skin regulates body temperature through vasoconstriction and insulation. So your skin regulates temperature through insulation by body fat. Um, vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction is when the blood vessels constrict to increase blood flow. Behavioral, behavioral control, healthy person is able to maintain temperature when exposed. However, extreme unconscious person is unable to, to recognize extreme temperature. A person with impaired um, thought process is also unable to regulate temperature. So it's your responsibility as a nurse to conserve these aspects. I have an NCLEX question here. You can read it. Um, these are some factors that affect body temperature. So, as you know, age, newborns have newborns have difficulty with thermal regulation because they're now coming into the world. So, they have a tendency with wide fluctuations of temperature. Provide a warm blanket to maintain thermal regulation. 
exercise, when someone is exercising, increased blood supplies, 